Hello, thanks for joining us today. It's great to have you with us. This is online worship with South Noah Baptist Church. Maybe you've been part of our church for a long time. Maybe you're just checking us out for the first time today. However you found us, it's great to have you with us. We're going to take a moment as we begin today just to pause and to focus our minds on God. Maybe you've been doing lots of things before you log on to watch this. Maybe you've been watching other things. However you've come to this, we're aware there's so much going on in our world. And so we just want to take a moment to pause. Then we're going to have some words from Psalm 103. But if you're able to, let's pause. We're going to take a moment to pray and then we're going to have some songs of worship as we often say do join in as much as you can but let's pray together father god however we're feeling right now whatever's going on we thank you for your unfailing love your forgiveness your mercy your grace shown through jesus christ thank you for the presence of your holy spirit come to us now wherever we're watching this from meet with us in jesus name we pray amen
gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I
As we said at the start, welcome. My name's Pete. I'm the minister of the church. It's great to have you with us. As we continue through this lockdown time together, this will remain as it has done for the last while. Our primary service, our primary act of worship. So do subscribe to this YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss any of our content. For the next while, as well with the lockdown restrictions in place, we really want to encourage you to continue to reach out, to connect, to bless and encourage one another. We know that there's been a lot of that going on, but let's do that even more as we journey through this lockdown season together. If you'd like to know more about the church, maybe you're checking us out for the first time or you have questions, then you can get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Our website is southnorbaptist.org. You can connect with us on social media. And of course, if you're watching this on the premiere, do join in the chat, say hello. Maybe you'd like to share something really significant like what you've had for breakfast. There are a few notices which are especially for those who are a regular part of our church. This week will be our prayer week. We start every new year with prayer week. And this week is the prayer week, depending on when you're watching this, but 11th to the 16th of January. And uh, we've sent out to those in our database some leaflets to guide us through our prayers but we know the postal service is under pressure and so there are also electronic versions of that available we're also going to have two zoom gatherings the first is going to be on wednesday where we're going to be with other churches across croydon for what we call transform croydon and then on thursday will be our own prayer gathering but again it depends when you're watching this do look out for login details for that or get in touch with us our January church members meeting will take place today if you're watching this on the premiere at 12 o'clock and again if you're a member of our church hopefully you've received login details for that if this doesn't apply to you or you're watching at another time sorry we know this continues to be a tough season for many and current lockdown will bring even more pressure on jobs and businesses but we do want to say thank you so much to those who give financially to our church those who've swapped from cash giving to online giving, all sorts of different ways people are contributing. And we're grateful. And if you would like to support our church financially, here are details of how you can do it now. As a church, we are independent, which is why we talk about money. We don't receive funds from an outside body. We also govern ourselves. We that's why we have church members meetings. But we are part of a wider family. We're interdependent in that sense. And that family is called Baptist Together. And they've made a short video for this season, for this year, to help us think about what it means to be part of that movement. What does it mean to belong to Baptists Together? We are each a brushstroke made by our Lord's hand, each one playing a valuable and unique part in Baptist Together. Each Baptist adding to God's canvas in beautiful ways. Our churches are full of energy, colour and vibrancy. Our regional associations, colleges and specialist teams help our churches to paint God's picture. God works his canvas. adding layers of his love to tell his story throughout the Baptist family. 
As Baptists Together, we commit ourselves to being a movement led by the Spirit of God. Celebrating diversity, we will value, trust and respect one another in Christ. So what does it mean to belong to Baptist Together? It means we're part of God's bigger picture as he paints his kingdom. We're going to pause and be led in prayer now. If you're able to take a moment where you are and uh, do pray with us, do lift up your heart before the Lord. And then we're going to hear today's Bible reading. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, as we look around our world today, it's easy to lose hope, to feel as if the darkness is all around and we may never see the morning light. But Father God, we know that you are a faithful God, a God that we can turn to in times of trouble. As we read in 1 John, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So Father God, we can pray to you in confidence, knowing that you hear our prayers and that when you hear our prayers, you act. So, Father God, we lift up the pandemic. All those lives that have been lost, Lord God, we pray for the families, the friends, the communities that are left behind as they mourn. We pray that you give them comfort and we pray that you give them peace. As the infection rate increases all around the world, Lord God, and it can feel as if our measures are not able to deal with it, I pray, Lord God, that you keep us resolute in stopping and curtailing the spread of this virus. That those people who deny it, Lord God, will see reason, that they will accept that this is a reality and they must play their part. Father God, I pray that this virus will spread slower and that no new variants will appear. Father God, we pray for our health workers. We pray for all those people who are put under tremendous strain during this moment. People working constantly with very little respite and having to see the trauma of this pandemic firsthand. We pray, Lord God, you give them strength. And we pray, Father God, that you just give them that extra little bit to help them keep on going. And Father God, we pray that at some point they will get respite. And we pray that they will be able to find comfort. And Father God, as the vaccine starts to get rolled out around the world, that little ray of hope, we pray, Lord God, that it is distributed effectively and efficiently and that the, virus, that the vaccine does give us protection against the virus and that there'll be no new variants of the virus that will undermine the effectiveness of the vaccine. And Father God, we lift all this up to you, knowing that you hear us, and that when you hear us, you act. Father God, we pray for our freedom. We see the freedoms being eroded around the world. We look at democracies like America and Hong Kong, and Father God, we know that the freedom to worship you is also persecuted against around our world. And that there are many of our brothers and sisters who cannot worship you freely, who cannot profess to know who you are without fear of persecution and torture. And Father God, we pray for those who fight for freedoms, who fight to be able to express their love of you, Lord God, that you will just go with them and protect them. And Father God, those that are persecuted, we pray that you they find salvation and refuge in you. And Father God, we pray for ourselves here at South Norwood. We pray for our jobs. We pray for our housing situation. We pray for our children 
as the education system gets pushed to its limits. We pray for those that have to shield and isolate and can feel lonely. Father God, please be with them all, be with us all, answer our prayers. And we know that we can lift up these prayers in confidence to you because you hear us and when you hear us, you act. Father God, we pray for the family of Annetta as they mourn her loss. We pray that they also find comfort in you. And we lift all of this up in your son's name, Jesus Christ, knowing that you hear our prayers. Amen. 1 John 4 verse 7 Dear friends, we should love each other because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become God's child and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his one and only son into the world so that we could have life through him. This is what real love is. It is not our love for God. It is God's love for us in sending his son to be the way to take away our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us that much, we also should love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is made perfect in us. We know that we live in God and he lives in us because he gave us his spirit. We have seen and can testify that the father sent his son to be the saviour of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God has God living inside and that person lives in God. And so we know the love that God has for us and we trust that love. God is love. Those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. This is how love is made perfect in us, that we can be without fear on the day God judges us, because in this world we are like him. Where God's love is, there is no fear, because God's love drives out fear. It is punishment that makes a person fear. So love is not made perfect in a person who fears. On our last video last week, we launched our theme for this year, 2021, Great is your faithfulness. Each year as a church, we generally have a theme that we hang things on. And one of the things we said about God being faithful is it's not just something he does. It says something about who he is, his character. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to be thinking about some of the things that we say about God, what he's like, his character. And we've called this series very grandly, Behold Your God. Have you ever had a conversation with someone about what they think God is like? If you were to go to the street, assuming we weren't in lockdown, maybe an online poll is better in this season, and you ask people, did they believe in God? And what they thought about God, you would get a huge range of answers, and not just from people of different religions, but even people that claim to have no religion. There are lots of theories and ideas out there, aren't there? Maybe you've had these conversations with your family and your friends. Of course, lots of people say they don't believe in God. They are unsure, maybe they're agnostic. Some will claim to be atheists. But if someone says they don't believe in God, an interesting question is to find out what God they don't believe in. Why do I say that? Well, Christopher Hitchens, he was a well-known atheist who died a couple of years ago. He said this, the existence of God would be bad. It would be awful if it was true. If there was a permanent, total, one o'clock, divine supervision and invigilation of what you do, you'd never have a waking or sleeping moment when you weren't being watched and controlled and supervised by some celestial entity from the moment of your conception to the moment of your death. It would be like living in North Korea. Wow. For Hitchens, he didn't want a God who was watching us who was a dictator, who was like an invigilator, a schoolmaster. He saw therefore that religion was bad because that's what God must be like. But as Christians, I think we'd agree with him. We don't believe in a God like that. We don't a God. We don't want a God like that. Because the God of the Bible is not the God he fears the existence of. And so the character of God 
What we say God is like is very important. What kind of God do we follow? What kind of God do we worship? Of course, for Christians, the foundation, number one answer to what is God like is this, Jesus. Because the Bible says Jesus is how we know God. He is the exact representation of his being, it says in the book of Hebrews. And then John in his gospel says this, no one has ever seen God. The one and only son, the one who is at the father's side has revealed him. Jesus tells us what God is like, but there are some key words used throughout the Bible to describe God that we see exemplified in Jesus. And the first and probably the most well-known phrase about God that we're thinking about today is this, God is love. What does it mean to say that about God? God is love. Well, firstly, God is love within himself. Similarly to what we said about faithfulness, when we say God is love, we're not just saying God is loving or something about God does, God loves me, but actually in himself, God is love. He is the definition of love, the source of love. As one writer put it, John is not identifying a quality that God possesses. He's making a statement about the essence of God's being. He is love. Not love as opposed to other things, because he is other things as well. But in himself he is love. Which, as we thought about a few months ago on these videos, takes us to the Christian belief of the Trinity. Because we believe that there is one God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, but one God. And they are three persons, not humans, but they have personality. And they exist loving one another. They're individual, they're distinct, and yet, to put it theologically, they're in union with each other, one in nature or substance, sometimes called a community of being. In other words, within God himself, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, there is love, constantly giving and receiving love. Love is always flowing between them. Why? Because love always has an object or a subject. And so in this passage, John speaks about God showing his love in sending his son. And then he says, God has given us of his spirit. And then you see, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, this might sound hard to understand, hard to get your head around. And it is a mystery. It is difficult. But we read, love comes from God. God is love. I heard someone on a TV show reality TV show, I confess to watching it. And they said, just this week I heard them say, I'm really loving, I have a lot of love to give. Well, that's probably true for them, but how do we know that unless we speak to the people they're close to, that she was connected with? Love is always towards someone. But within God, he is love within himself. God is love. That's number one, it's who he is. Number two, God's love is shown to us. Because God is love, he shows his love, he gives his love to us. Psalm 145 says he's loving towards all that he has made. Psalm 103 that we saw something from earlier says this, great is his love towards those who fear him. There's a particular expression of his love. Our passage says this, God shows his love. He reveals his love. He shows us what he was like. How? Through Jesus, by giving his son, by Jesus dying as a sacrifice for us. God showed his love. Not that we love God. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sin. God is love and he shows his love to us, to his world, even when we reject him. He reaches out in love, even to us when we were far away. Book of Romans puts it like this, God demonstrates his love. He shows his love. He demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now how can it be loving for someone to die? That sounds contrary, odd. But it was out of love that Jesus died. 
He died to make a way for us to be in a relationship with God, to us to be included and caught up in the love of the Father. He died, as John puts it, as an atoning sacrifice for our sin, to put right everything that was wrong so that his love might flood our hearts. By saying God is love, it's not saying that any kind of love reflects God. This is part of a particular story of God at work, saving his people. Sending Jesus, as it says in verse 14, as the saviour of the world. Number one, God is love within himself. Number two, God shows his love towards us. He offers us his love. And number three, we respond in love. This passage was written to Christians to tell them and encourage them to love one another. It says that's the mark of being a Christian. Why? Because God loved us and gave himself for us. And that's more than an example. That's how we love one another. That's the source of our hope and life. If we love one another, that's hard to say, if we love one another, it shows God lives in us and his love is made complete in us, as it says in verse 12. So if you are a Christian today watching this, the question is, are we living in love for one another? Live it out. What does it say in verse 20? We cannot say we love God and yet hate a brother and sister. It's incompatible. We need to live a life of love. Now we as a church may not be meeting in our usual ways. We might be in lockdown as we are, but there are still lots of ways we can express our love for one another. Practical ways. Giving, supporting, helping, calling up, encouraging. Lots of ways. And most of all, by praying. Since God so loved us, verse 11 of our passage, so we ought to love one another. What is God like? God is love. Behold your God. He is love within himself. He is the very definition of love. And he pours his love on us. He shows us his love in Jesus dying and rising again. Famous verse in the Bible, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him doesn't perish but has eternal life. If you've never known this love of God today, come and ask him to fill you with his love. Open yourself up to this love. Ask God to bring his new life and salvation to you. The Bible says he brings his love to our hearts by the Holy Spirit. If you're new to this, resolve to find out more. And those of us who are Christians, if we really believe God is love, are we living that out in how we treat others? Are we loving one another as he has loved us? How can we show God's love to those around us, even if we're not physically meeting people this week? Let's take a moment to pray. Thank you, Lord, for your love, that you are love and you loved us so much you died for us. May all of us who are watching this know the reality of that truth today. And those of us who do know it, may we live lives of love, empowered by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 Over the mountains and the seas
see your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always see of when your love came down i could sing of your love forever 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 oh i feel like dancing It's foolishness, I know But when the world has seen the lights They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now Dancing like we're dancing now They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now sing of your love forever i could sing of your love forever i could sing of your love forever i could sing of your love forever Come to the end of our service hopefully something has impacted you spoken to you encouraged you stirred you in some way we'd love to hear from you do get in touch full contact details will be coming in a moment do connect with one another afterwards do make contact this week let's pray together a blessing as we close may we know the blessing of the father the love of the son made real in our hearts by the holy spirit Right now and in the days ahead, may we walk with you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Have a good week. We're back on this channel for Act of Worship. It premieres at 11 a.m. on a Sunday. And we put out a midweek thought on a Wednesday. God bless. Take care.